On this episode of Steadfast 2277, we're going to be changing the air door actuator in this 2010 Ford Fusion. Alright, so this Ford Fusion here is my vehicle. The AC stopped working. And it has about 60,000 miles on it, so I don't think it's any compressor issue, compressor issues or anything like that. But you can't rule that stuff out because you never know. So stuff like that, you just to see if there's Freon in the system for you at home people. You know, you can go to your local auto parts store, or Walmart, and get the AC Pro kit type things. Well, they have a gauge on it that reads the pressure that's in the system. So what you can do is you can go out and get one of those. You need to have the can with it, so that way when you plug it in, the, the system, the stuff that's in the system doesn't pff, spray out or anything like that. So you hook it up onto your high pressure or low pressure side, whatever the instructions say. So that's your, your AC um, plugs to get into it. Another thing you can do is if you have um, a leak and you know there's dye in the system, you can go ahead and you can get your UV light to put on the AC components in the engine bay. That would be stuff like, you can follow these lines that go right along the side here. That's all your AC lines. And then in here, there's a little radiator here for your AC as well. Go ahead and you can skim across that, see if you see anything like glowing wise or anything like that. But I know it's not a compressor issue. It's not a line issue. It's not a Freon issue. It's none of that stuff. And how I find found that out was by when I was in the car, it was cold for like, I want to say maybe like five seconds. And then it got really hot and started blowing hot air, even though I had it on cold. So I hit the forms. I did a lot of research looking around and it founds out, I found out that it's the air door temperature actuator. And it's a little piece like this. It's a little motor that you plug in, two bolts, 5.5 millimeters and a plug that goes right in there and it controls the door inside your dash. So there's a door inside your dash that helps adjust the temperature flow of air going through. Too hot, it turns one way to make it a little more hotter and that's how you, or too, you want it colder, it'll turn another way to blend the air. That's why it's called a blend door actuator because it blends the, the air that you want in your cabin. So what I found out was now on the Ford Fusions, this will work. I'm pretty sure on other vehicles it will work too. It doesn't hurt to try. So what you do is you go to your temperature. Let me hop in here. So what you're going to do is when you come to your, your controls here, what I did was I had my blower motor on high. It doesn't matter what speed it is, but you want to be able to feel the air coming out of the vents. So what I did was I turned all my temperature all the way to hot which is where it was blowing. So and I had the fan on high, and what i do was, I would slowly just turn each setting, like so, until I got all the way to the cold. Just keep going slowly, and it's, you can see that it's gonna be slowly adjusting, and it's actually gonna blow cold for a little bit, right? And then, boom, you're back to hot. So that's how I found out that it was the door actuator. I even went down there as I was doing it on my knees. I looked up, I found it, and as I'm turning it, it was turning, but then all of a sudden, when I had it all the way to cold, it went all the way back. So that's a malfunction inside the actuator. So we're gonna go ahead and switch that part out. It was only 33 bucks at Advanced Auto Parts. Not a huge dent in the wallet at all. And it's something that's definitely worth it to get that ice cold AC back, especially when it's 90 degrees in New England right now. Not fun at all. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you where it's located, how to take it out, and how to properly put it in because you're not supposed to be able to turn the dial on it as you're installing it because then you could break it. So you have to be very careful about that as well. So don't when you get it start playing with it or anything like that because then you're going to break it. So then we're going to put it in and fire this puppy up and hopefully I got some cold ass IC. IC. AC. Hopefully I have some cold ass AC. E. All right, let's get going. All right, so you want to do is put the seat all the way back so you have plenty of room down in the footwell. You're going to come down in here. See if I can get you guys up in there. Get the light. So it is right behind that blue piece. Hook that. Get my little pointer thing here. So your actuator is right here. So it's this piece right here. There's a bolt here, and there's a bolt 
right up there and then that's your plug and that's gonna come out and your new one's just gonna go right back in. It is that simple and easy. It's a little, you know, restricted here for movement and stuff like that. So I'm gonna set you down. It's gonna be done pretty quickly. So here you go. All right, so what I noticed is that when you put it in, it's not always gonna line right back up with this blend door. You don't wanna move this one, the new one that you're putting on there. If you look right in here, there's a black one right here that's attached to your car. Move that one so that it lines up with the square opening. I don't know if you can see that. There's a, little, there's a bit of a rectangle. Line that up so that it fits, because it won't go in sometimes. Then once you line that up, it should pop right in like that. And then you take your connector, plug your connector right into it, and then your two 5.5 millimeter bolts. All right, now, once you go ahead and you plug any two bolts in, like I said, don't mess with the one on the actuator. You can mess with the, the door one to line it up so that it goes in there. You're in a little bit of a tight quarter, so make sure you put the seat back. You have plenty of room to be able to work. You'll be fine. The AC is a very big and complex system. Don't just think it's going to be that because you could be cutting the compressor. You could have no free on it. You could have a leak. You could have a leak anywhere in the system. You could have it in the evaporator in the dash, or you can have it in the condenser. You could have it anywhere. It's a very big system, so if you don't know what you're doing, um, look it up, Google it, YouTube it, find out if you can do it at home. If not, I'm sorry, you're going to have to spend some money and bring it in. So, But the last thing to do now is just check to see if this puppy works, and let's fire the, the Ford right on up. All right, let's go ahead and fire this puppy on up. It's on cold, it's blowing, then it's on high. Now it's blowing cold now, but we'll see if it actually lasts. Put a little out so that way you're in the heat. And so you know you're not just blowing in the cool air that's in the garage or in the shade. All right. So far, so good, nice and cold. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it for a spin and see if it actually is fixed. So, let's take it for a ride. Adjust the seat, go far back. All right. So far, so good, I'm gonna just put it on max AC. Seems to be cooking with fire right now. All right. Sorry for the noise, that's just from the uh, the AC vents there. I'll turn it down. Ice cold AC, man. See, that fixed it really good. All right, seems to be doing pretty good right now. I'm gonna continue my drive, but, you know, like I said, it's a complex system, so, you know, be careful, do your information. That This was a pretty good, easy fix. A lot easier than, you know, finding the leak, ripping it all apart. I got to do that in my Jeep XJ, so stay tuned for that because there is a leak somewhere, and I got to find it. So, lucky me. All right, guys. So, you do you. Like, share, subscribe, and have a great night.